Okay, you guys, so I'm going to be starting out with my P. Louise base, like always. I go in with a pretty thin layer, but just make sure that it's completely even and it's distributed throughout my entire lid, my crease, and my, even my brow bone. And yeah, I'm just going to take that and just spread that product out. And then I'm going to take a fluffy brush and just make sure that I pat everything in. That way we get a tacky consistency and the eyeshadows will have something to stick to and they will appear more pigmented. So now I'm going in with the P. Louise A Desert Full of Desire palette and I'm going to be taking that first shade and just packing that on in my crease. Um, you guys, I literally filmed an entire portion of me showing you guys the palette, how the shades look and everything and the lighting was just so off. I couldn't get my camera to just do what I needed it to do. The lighting was off. Everything was just off about it. So I do apologize that I didn't show you guys the actual palette. Um, in my last video that I posted before this one, you guys can see it. Um, I showed you guys all the things that I had got from the P. Louise Black Friday sale. So in that video, you're able to see it. But in this one, unfortunately, you aren't. So I just decided to post pictures of the shades that I was using. And you can actually see the, what the shades look like and how true to color they are. But whether I show the palette or not, I'm still going to do this technique where I show the picture of it and just put an emoji over the shade that I'm using because it's a whole lot easier for me. Um, it's kind of a hassle, especially if the palette is big, to keep putting up the palette in the video and showing you guys what shade I'm using and everything. It's just, it, it's just a little bit too much, especially when it's like bulky packaging like this palette. <music> So as you can see, I'm just packing on those shades. I'm not doing too much of the blending part. That's just because I like to pack on the shade to its intensity first and then I go in and blend it out. Um, the only time that I go in and really blend out the shade when I initially put it down is for the transition shade like you see me doing because this is the transition shade, this is the last shade, so you wanna definitely make sure that that shade is blown out and it's diffused really nicely, especially if you're wanting to achieve a smoky eye look. So now I'm about to go ahead and cut the crease, but first we have to get all of that extra eyeshadow off so that way our lid shade is very nice and popping and it's very just out there in your face. <laughs> so yeah, I got really close to the camera so hopefully you guys can see what I'm doing, but yeah, I had to get really close. I'm not really that skilled yet when it comes to the halo eyes, so yeah, I need to get really, really close to the mirror so I can see what I'm doing and try to get my halo eyes as even as possible even though i'm pretty sure that it definitely was not even <laughs> but yeah i just like to go in with that and then i take a q-tip and just wipe off all of that product and then i go in with my blank canvas base and i'm just going to pretty much put that base where the eyeshadow was wiped off <laughs> I'm going to take the crease shade, the first one that we put down, and I'm just going to make sure that the edges are slightly blended. And then right after that, I'm gonna go into the lid shade. Now y'all, my lighting is pretty bright, so I really feel like it was washing out the color that I was putting on my lid, but it was absolutely gorgeous. Even though I'm going to be taking a glitter to go over top of that eyeshadow, you definitely did not have to at all. I'm just a real extra person. If y'all don't know by now, then yeah, I literally love to put on glitters 
over top of my shimmers just to have it pop a little bit more so yeah but like i said you guys definitely don't have to do this step um it definitely was not necessary the shade was very pigmented it was very bright and metallic like it was just gorgeous you guys could kind of see how it looked a little bit better in that clip of me showing you guys the ruby kisses thing but yeah so i'm just going over top of that and to help apply that glitter i use lash glue that's typically what i like to use when i'm applying my glitter and obviously the lash glue dries down to a clear finish So now I'm going to be going into my Pink Radiance Primer by MAC. I really do like this primer a lot. I totally forgot that I was sampling it. So I wanted to use the last little bit and I'm finally like sold on it. I really do like this primer a lot. It gives a really nice matte finish and it does help the foundation lay beautifully. So now I'm going into my NARS Soft Matte Foundation. Um, I was only able to get samples of this because they were sold out everywhere and on the NARS website, but now I finally have the full size. So yeah, I'm really excited to um, pretty much put out a review on this foundation. And I also got the concealers to match. So yeah, I'm just going to be blending that out with my Kabuki brush. I always like to blend out my foundation with a brush that's dense because it adds more coverage. So yeah. Um, you always want to start with the primer first and then go in with a brush or a sponge if you want lighter coverage but i like the full coverage so i go in with a brush So now I'm going to be taking my LA Girl Pro Concealers. I always use two concealers when I do my base routine. I always do one that's closer to my skin tone, but obviously a couple of shades lighter because we are highlighting. This is the highlight and contour portion. So I'm going in with a lighter tone first, and then I'm going to be blending that out. Um, I went in with one layer, but this concealer is actually really nice when it comes to building it up. And I just wanted just a little bit more coverage, so I went in with a second layer. But I kind of avoided the inner corner part when I went in with that second layer. And you guys are going to see why in a second. <music>
So this is the reason why I had avoided that inner corner part as much as I could because this stuff is definitely not necessary, but I do like a really bright under eye. A lot of people don't go to this extreme when it comes to the uh, concealer shades, but I love a super bright under eye. So I go in with a concealer that's like a thousand times lighter than my skin tone. But yeah, it always works out and it always looks really nice and it makes my contour and bronzer pop way more when I do this step. But you can obviously skip this step if you want to. But yeah, I just take that and I mainly keep it focused in the inner corner part. Like I do blend it out so it can just look nice and seamless, but I always like to keep it focused in the inner corner part. <laughs> So now I'm going to take my Huda Beauty press powder and I'm pretty much going to take this powder and set all of those places that I went and highlighted on my face. So that is underneath my eyes, the bridge of my nose, my forehead and my chin. Um, so I decided to skip contour. Obviously, I wouldn't do this stuff until I did my cream contour, but I just didn't want to do that in today's video. Um, I just wanted to keep it like all pretty much like powder. So now I'm going to be taking my Easy Bake and Snatch Powder by Huda Beauty. You guys, I literally have to use this product every single time I um, do my makeup now, which it basically just brightens the under eye and brightens just areas that you want to be brighter. I was talking to somebody, y'all don't mind me, but um, yeah, usually I go in with a brush to apply that just so it's a little bit lighter in the product, but that's okay. I just went in with the sponge, but it still ended up looking great so yeah i just went in with both of those bronzers and i'm just bronzing up those areas that we did not highlight so that's the temples of my forehead my cheekbones and um my chin as well so that first shade that i went in was just to warm up the skin and then that second shade that i used was to pretty much bring structure to my face and to just contour everything out <music> Now I'm just going to take a couple of those crease shades that I used um, when I did my eyeshadow and I'm just going to blend that out and I'm also going to add some glitter as well to the inner corner just to make the eyes pop a little bit more after I apply my mascara so yeah <laughs> take my one size blush this is one of my favorite blushes ever and i feel like it really just brought the look together and brought more warmth to my skin and gave me like that sun kissed look so now i'm going to line my lips with my favorite brown lip pencil and i'm going to be applying a nude liquid lipstick <music> Thank you. 
now I'm going to take a matte shade and I'm going to put that in my inner corner just to brighten up my eyes a little bit more because they are super smoky. And yeah, I'm going to be going into the palette to highlight my cheekbones as well. Instead of just taking a separate highlight, I'm like, why not just use a shade in the uh, palette? And I set my face before I did that just because it helps with the highlight and it helps it pop more. So yeah, you guys, I hope you all enjoy today's tutorial and you learned something new. Uh, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you in my next one. Mm -hmm.